الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علیہ نبی محمد و علیہ وصحبی وسلم ام بارحب تف اللہ ون آف دی ٹائپس آف اخلاق او ادب سی that we should try to avoid some of the, one of the wicked mannerisms that we should strive to be away from during the holy month of Ramadan is hasid envy and uh, thriving on the mistakes of others and i say this as we know Ramadan is coming to an end and it's a time to increase our ibadah Increase our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Increase, strive to come closer to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And do good deeds. So it's important for us to remind one another of the bad deeds too that we should avoid. Because you, it never ceases to amaze me how many people take enjoyment, receive enjoyment when a da'i, someone who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a mistake. And how many people gather together to rejoice even if it's a person of Ahla Bida, that they're being spoken about and the people gather together in numbers. They enjoy these kind of topics. They immerse themselves in these kind of topics. But when it comes to speaking about قال Allah, قال Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what Allah said and what his messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam said, the people aren't really that interested. Very few. And that's من توفيق من الله سبحانه وتعالى for those who are interested in علم النافع beneficial knowledge. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said كل ابن آدم خطأ وخير خطأين توابون. All the children of Adam commit sins or they make mistakes, and those who make these mistakes or sins are uh, the best of them are those who repent. If we follow that prophetic hadith and we gain some insight and some basira into this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we can learn so much it's a madrasa in and of itself because one of the things that we can learn from the tarbiya of this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is first a, a qaida azima it's a major qaida that everyone makes mistakes if you remember that i don't care if it's sheikh so and so or sheikh so and so I don't care if it's Imam so-and-so or Imam so-and-so. Shaykh al-Islam. Wa ghayrihim. Min as-salaf as-salih hatta. Even from the salaf. Make mistakes. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu ibn Adam. All the children of Adam. Who escapes from that? So if we learn from this qaida that everyone makes mistakes, that means you and I, So we shouldn't rejoice in, the, in other people falling. And we shouldn't rejoice in catching and finding the mistakes of others. And we shouldn't cut and paste and make videos and, and whole books and pamphlets and booklets and PDF files rejoicing in the mistakes of others. That doesn't negate that we don't criticize Ahl Bid'ah. That doesn't negate that we don't give nasiha and advice to Ahl Sunnah. That doesn't negate that we don't advise one another and correct one another and warn against the mistakes. But it's just, what is our intention? Do we have a su, su a, a qast? Do we have a, a wicked intention? Or do we have a good intention? You know, that which is to draw closer to Allah, to advise our brother, or to help the people so that they are warned against this mistake that our beloved brother fell into. I want to look at two statements of ulama sunnah that gives us some insight into these two mas'alatain, uh, these two issues that I'm talking about. One I'm talking about is hasid. You know, uh, envy and, and, and wanting to destroy others. And the other is talking about uh, that, that we all make mistakes and how to kind of deal with those mistakes. We're not going to make this long. We want to make this uh, beneficial. And I just thought it was necessary to just touch on this, even though we're in Ramadan still. And I was trying to avoid these type of topics. But these topics love me and they come to me. Wallah, Mr. Ham, may Allah protect us from... Our evil selves, I mean, and the evil of others, I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, so we mentioned the Habit of Allah. First, listen to this hadith of the Prophet, uh, this, this uh, statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah about this hasid 
that we see amongst many of our du'at. We see or we see circulating around the du'at. And I believe it, it's affected some of the people. We can see by their statements, their PDF files, their this and this and this and this, the videos, the things that they've been doing for years against other people of the sunnah and causing divisions between Ahl sunnah causing hatred amongst the people and causing hatred and confusion amongst the youth. This is why I want the youth, don't be confused. Don't fall for foolishness. Learn from our mistakes. Go forward. Come closer to Allah. That's what you're asked to do. You're not asked to know my mistake, this guy's mistake, that mistake, and to uh, memorize those mistakes and know so much more about those mistakes and you don't even know the name of one Sahabi. And you don't even know one dua. And you don't even know how to properly pray. And perhaps you don't even know Fatiha properly, but yet you know to warn against Yasir Qadi. And you know Nu'man, uh, Bashi, uh, Nu'man Ali Khan said this and, and undermines Tawheed in such and such statement. You know these things, but yet you don't know about your deen. And I use those examples uh, not to necessarily talk about those individuals, even though I've talked about them in the past and I still have my same position about those individuals, but I use them as examples, not to take them belittle them or anything like this but i use some examples because they have issues they need to correct as we all need to correct things but they have minhaji issues big minhaji issues which are away from the salafi minhaj now listen to this about sheikh al-islam ibn Taymiyyah, what he said he said وهو خلق مذموم مطلقا وهو في هذا موضوع أو هذا آه هذا موضوع من أخلاق المغضوب عليهم. Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, he said, and perhaps some of the people who uh, associate themselves with uh, with with knowledge, with beneficial knowledge, you know, meaning that they're associate themselves with calling themselves scholars or the people who consider them scholars or consider them students of knowledge. Muntasabina al ilm You know, they associate themselves with ilm, with knowledge seeking. And other than them, uh, and, and they're, they're touched with a, perhaps a type of hasid, a type of envy. For those who Allah has guided with beneficial knowledge or righteous deeds, how many people have you seen that are graduates from Jama Islamiyah or that are come out of Yemen or they studied in Egypt or they studied in Morocco or they studied in this place and that place and you see that when they come back all they have is their guns are on target of other people from Ahl Sunnah. We're not saying when there's a refutation that's necessary. We're not talking about that. But we're talking about when Ahl Sunnah have the same minhaj and they differ over a sheikh. They differ over hukum on this one. So then you have to wonder... Is this cust? Is it lillah? Or is this cust? Ihanat al nas. And to bring the people down. To destroy someone just because they see this young guy who has some ilm. Or they see this other guy who's doing righteous deeds. He's doing some good charity work, but they, they don't like that. They need to knock him down. So listen to what Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. So I'm just giving you a little example of what he, he said. And then he said, and he said that this al-itlaq, you know, mutlaqan, without exception, this is wicked uh, adab. It's wicked. There's no, it's no, never excuse, excusable to have a hasid towards your brother like this. Hasid in the negative sense. We don't mean hasid that you, if you had elm like him, you would love, you would love that. Not that you want to take, hasid meaning that you want to izalat al that you want to take his good. You want, his, you want his good to be removed, his ni'mah to be removed at any cost. And there's different types of hasid. And we talked about it in Bulugh Maram from the tafsil of Ben Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala. And so the point being, it's, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable to detest someone else's blessing. MashaAllah, that brother graduated from Jem Islamiyah. Huh, I heard he sat with so-and-so. I heard he listens to Sheikh so-and-so. I heard he was in the halaqa of Sheikh so-and-so. We don't like him. Sheikh so-and-so warned against him. Okay, this, you know, this could be, not saying in all cases, but a lot of times that's hasid. 
A lot of times people just want the net. They want that guy. He's all, he needs to be off the Dallas circuit. He's got too many YouTube hits. He's got too many. He's too popular. The people like him or whatever the case may be. All that's got to get out of your heart, especially as a student, especially if you're doing Talib al-Ilm. And he said, He said in this, uh, with regards to this, they have basically accursed uh, 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 manners. Where, the, you know, the, the, this is a hated, detestable type of mannerism. So that's about Hasid. Right. The other point I wanted to mention, I'm sorry for taking, making this longer. I wanted this to be like three minutes and I, I have problems doing that. The other thing I wanted to mention, and this comes right from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, who said, قال, the Muslim and Yahjara This is in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet Ali said, La And in another narration, he said, La He says, Don't spy on one another. Don't detest one another. You know, have this hatred for one another. Well, I to hasid, and don't have this hasid for one another, as we said. You want the ni'mah to be taken from that person. Well, I to dabr, and don't turn your backs on one another or cut one another off, but rather be brothers. Be brothers, the Islamic brotherhood, ibad the law. You know, you need to be servants of Allah as brothers. Uh, and he said it's not permissible for a Muslim to make hajr, you know, to cut an. Uh, cut his brother off for more than three days. And that that's, the ulama, they mentioned that that's regarding uh, something dunyui. Not necessarily if it's the hajr for a person is a mubtadiya or has some sins or whatever the case may be, which is a whole other topic we don't want to get into here, but we've talked about it. And many of the students uh, and Ahl al-Khayr and Ahl al-Sunnah have expanded and expounded upon that greatly. So go and do your research. The the point I wanted to mention, a fillah here, uh, is this last statement of Imam Sa'di. He said regarding this uh, this topic in general. He says, "Fahaba, fahaba an aswaba ma'ak yakinan. Fahal khata insan unwan ala su su qasti." He says. Uh, suppose that the truth, so this is talking about when there's mistakes, and, and we're talking about mistakes of Ahlul Sunnah, we're not talking about someone Ahl Bid'ah, who's total minhaj, everything they do, you know, he's a Sufi, he goes to the graves, that's one example of Sufism, not all Sufism, okay, he's a Khwana Muslimin, he's a big, you know, into the politics and into uh, 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 protest, and he's into this, or he's a Takfiri, and he believes in, make a Takfir of all the governments, and he believes in the, the ulama, or Murjia, and he believes in this, and the, you know, those people have a total minhaj. It's not, these things don't even really apply to them because they're mutadi'ah. Right. We're talking about between Ahl Sunnah. Okay. So Imam Sa'di, he says, he says, suppose that the truth is with you, certainly. Yaqeenan. For sure the truth is with you in this particular issue. Does the, the mistake of a person mean that they have wicked intention because this is what happens you say the brothers how many refutations i want you to look at those english refutations because unfortunately in the arabic refutations you find this too you find this from some of the people who write refutations that they're always reading into the person's cuss they don't just say he made a mistake sometimes they will say he's correct but what he means behind you read battle and they say this in everything the guy says come on we can't accept that how do you know this man's intention? Because we have so many books, so many tapes of him uh, uh, helping the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and then you are reading into every statement he says, and it's a qa'ida that's salim, it's a truthful principle from the religion, you even agree to it, but then you say his qast, we, we, he, you read the biha batil. He, he means by it, he intends by it falsehood. Now there are times that it happens, it does. But you need dalil for that. Instead of always assuming the negative and the evil and the hasad. Right. So then, uh, Imam Sa'di, then he says, Even if the issue was like this, 
لواجب رمي جميع العلماء الأمة بالقصور السيء. He said if the issue is like this, then it would be an obligation to attack all the scholars of the Ummah and basically question their intention because everyone makes mistakes and say that their intention is wicked. And then he says, does anyone, is anyone free from a mistake? So he's bringing that point up. This is a qaida. No one is free from mistakes. Imam Malik also had a beautiful athar, and I've mentioned it countless times, where he said, uh, uh, كُلُّ يُسِيبُ يُخْتِي or كُلُّ يُرَاد إِلَى صَاحِبَ هَذَا قَبْر هَذَا قَبْر Imam Malik said, and he was teaching in the haram, which means, okay, I messed up the, uh, the Arabic a bit, but I was trying to give you the ma'na, that he was teaching in the haram, and he basically said that everyone, you know, gets something correct, and they get, make mistakes, except the inhabitant of that grave, letting us know that we all make mistakes. But the Prophet ﷺ was operating on wahi, on revelation. Even the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين. Am I saying the Sahaba had mistakes? I'm saying that they made mistakes in ijtihad. And they were rewarded for that. And forgiven for that, that we believe. Because there were issues of ijtihad. We're talking about ijtihad of fiqh. Faqiyya. So then he said, he said, uh, Basically, that the Ummah, you know, is, is understands this, that the Muslims in general, they understand that, and, and, and that, you know, that people make mistakes, and the only one who differs with this, that what differs with what Ajma al Ulama or Ajma al Muslimin, alay, that the, the Muslims have united upon, that they are in consensus upon. And that it's permissible to, uh, you know, so, so the ulama, the, the, the Muslims are, are united that it is not permissible. لا يحل رمي a Muslim بقصد سي إذا أخطى That it's not permissible to uh, attack or claim someone has a wicked intention just for a mistake that they make. So this gives us some insight, Ahabatifillah, that we need to be cautious about these issues. And especially, it's, uh, the, it's the month of Ramadan. You don't want to keep getting sins and keep falling in the same sins and keep the same entertainment of watching people fall. Even Ahl al and we're going to talk about these things in the future in detail, but it's going to take some research. We can't just talk about these things. We need to collect our data, which is Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. But we want to talk about this, you know, how Ahl Sunnah deals with one another, how do they deal with Ahl Bid'ah. But regardless, is that what we should take away from this Ahabit of Allah, is that we all make mistakes. And Ahl Sunnah, and that you shouldn't rejoice in the mistakes of others. And you should not rejoice even in the mistakes of Ahl Bid'ah. That you should want good for them. How many Mubtadi'ah that are so popular that I would love to support due to their popularity, and they reach so many people, but it's their bid'ah. They have a lot of minhajiyah issues. I was just, I, I came across a clip of one of the major famous guys out there, may Allah forgive us in him and guide us in him, who has statements about the Quran. Unacceptable. It's because he doesn't have knowledge. He didn't, he didn't study anywhere. Alhamdulillah, he's got a lot of, uh, he's good with non-Muslims, and he's good in his majal, but he just gives fatwa like nothing. He should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not the minhaj rabbani. You shouldn't be speaking about things if you don't have knowledge about it. You didn't study, Sheikh. Just be quiet on that issue. Don't answer every question. You don't have to. This is the problem. And, and you hear just making mistake after mistake and fatwa like nothing. Like he's just drinking tea, making fatwa, and making mistakes across the earth, which is circling around the world, and the people are following that. And that's why it becomes imperative for Ahl Sunnah to refute those mistakes and, and, and make that, uh, uh, that knowledge available to the people so they don't fall into that mistake. I, I, I was shocked. I listened to maybe five minutes, and I heard these fatwa and these crazy statements this particular individual made may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in him and guide us in him but my point being is I didn't rejoice in his mistakes I want him to correct himself because he has a major effect uh, on the on the ummah 
So many non-Muslims even you know maybe come to Islam at his hand, you know. So Allah maybe Allah will forgive him for some of his bid'ah uh, because of the good that he does. Perhaps this is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that bid'ah is still not acceptable, and it's something we still can't keep quiet about. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.